thank you so much, uh, Dr. Narsingh Varma. Uh, let me just get my slides. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you and very good morning to all of you. I can see my good friend, uh, Professor Jain Panda there and uh, greetings to Professor Anuj Maheshwari, governor of uh, ACP India chapter and all the uh, distinguished uh, faculty as well as delegates. Very good morning uh, to you. Uh, my topic is reversal of uh, diabetes, when and for whom. And the reason I've chosen this topic is because I think it's time that we physicians and diabetologists started talking about this. Everybody else except us is talking about this. Software engineers have become diabetes specialists now. Dietitians have become diabetes specialists now. And not only they become specialists, they are the saviors of the world. According to them, uh, we are all the bad people, you know, the diabetologists, physicians, what do they do? They write some tablets and they will tell you diabetes can't be cured. Diabetes can't be reversed, can't be everything. We are the saviors. We have come to save you from the clutches of those people like us, all of us, you know, the villains. And uh, we will now deliver you into a state, nirvana, where there is no diabetes. You're completely cured. You can eat whatever you want. Then the next question will ask, can type 1 diabetes be cured? Yes, any type of diabetes will cure for you. Can, uh, you know, uh, any other type of, you have no pancreas, can you cure me? Yes, that also will cure you. Suppose I have complication diabetes, my eye, kidney is gone, can I, yeah, we'll make your eye also normal. We'll make your kidney also normal. Everything will reverse for you. And what is the success rate? 100%. 100%. Sometimes 99, 99.5%, but very close to 100%. This is what they're all, uh, you know, promising. And this is what the whole, uh, you know, all the patients now going away, crying, all this. So somewhere we have to get in and say, what is this reversal all about and why we are not talking so much about it? Maybe we should be. That's what is going to be my talk. So when you look at the natural history of diabetes, it's, it's important to keep this in mind because um, when you see the natural history of diabetes, you'll straight away know that there is a stage of normal glucose tolerance. Following that, you enter the stage of pre-diabetes and we all know this. And then from there to the stage of clinical diabetes, and then to the stage of complications. So the normally we go from left to right. So when you're 20, 30, you may be here. When you're 35, 40, you may be there. Then you go into this stage. Unfortunately, some people end up in complications. Not all, but some develop complications. So the arrow is pulling you this way. What about arrow going this way from right to left, if you can go? That is what reversal is all about. Now, this particular, in fact, patients ask me why you are not talking about reversal, about diabetes. Everyone else is all the you know software engineers have become you know superheroes now. They are the ones. Uh, they've got a program. They'll give me a program and then they can cure my diabetes. You are not able to after 50 years of research. You are not able to cure my diabetes. Okay. Um, so and why you are not talking about it? They say, you know, when this figure was produced, this is my original figure. I produced this. 1975. Some of you may not have been born then. Okay. So 1975, we produced this. It is there in the literature. We published it in chapters. We published it in articles. The exact same figure. No change. It's already been there. Okay. Now here you can see there's a blue line going this way also. So from clinical diabetes, you can go into pre-diabetes. And if you enter there, you can also go this way. Okay. For diabetes, remember, there are modifiable risk factors, weight, waste, no exercise, eating wrong food. These are all modifiable. You can change it. But remember, there are also non-modifiable risk factors. Number one, you can't change your father and mother. If you already got the genes in you, it, you got it. You can't change it. Okay, You can uh, change your wife or your husband, but you cannot change your father and mother. The genes have already gone in. Okay. Now, so that's a non-modifiable. Second is age. You can put all the day you want on your hair, but aging is still aging only, isn't it? When you're 20 and when you're 70, you can't be the same body. And the body does break down. Various organs slow down. Pancreas is one such where you cannot, as of now, slow down the progression. So because of these non-modifiable risk factors, this pull in this direction is very strong. Here, you need a lot of effort to bring it back. It's like swimming against the tide. You know, you're swimming in the ocean and uh, the ocean is trying to pull you away. Now, we are trying to come to the shore, double effort you have to put to come in. 
So less effort is needed to go from here to there. Double effort is needed to go from there. But is it possible? Of course it's possible. You can also go from, otherwise I wouldn't have put this arrow in 1975 itself, I wouldn't have published it, isn't it? So this is what they say. You're always saying that type two diabetes is a progressive condition, it's treatable, but not curable or reversible. That truth is a truth. You, you can't avoid it. As I told you, there are certain non-modifiable risk factors. If, you're, if your father and mother are diabetic and if you're overweight, okay, or I'm not saying you, I'm just saying your patients, if you're sure father and mother is diabetic and they're overweight, show me how many are not diabetic at age 50. Show me, make a, make a list and send me. We'll publish that. Separately, we'll publish it saying that father and mother were diabetic, they were overweight and still they didn't have diabetes. We'll collect a few series and we'll publish it. It'll be publishable, you know, because it's almost 90-95% that they will get diabetes when they are 50 years old. Okay. But having said that, remission is now an accepted term. It always was, but we didn't have the data. See, my father used to talk about diabetes prevention in 1950s itself. And when he met uh, Dr. Harry Keane and others in 1980, I was there in London and he had a series of cases. He said, see, this patient lost weight. He became normal. So this is uh, remission and all that he started saying. They said, do an RCT, do an RCT to prove it. He said, I'm a clinician. I don't do RCTs and all that, you know. Then they said, then it's not accepted. So the prevention which he talked about, only after DPP was published, it came. By the time he had died, he went on saying it was prevention possible, possible, possible. 1950s he was talking. Nobody was talking about it. Maybe Jocelyn was talking. Nobody was talking. Every meeting, his 1980 uh, APA oration was prevention of diabetes, okay, uh, as a presidential oration was on that. So he went on believing in it, but he had no proof. Nobody would listen to him. They'll say there is no proof. After DPP came, only the proof came. Similarly, only after the direct trial came, they accepted it. Before that, it was a hypothesis. Yes, maybe you can. Maybe naturally they reversed all those things. So what is the ADA saying? ADA is saying, don't use the word reversal. Use the word remission. Reversal, you're saying they're cured. There is no cure. In medicine, very few things are cured. Remission is possible. Cancer goes into remission. Uh, psoriasis goes into remission. Rheumatoid arthritis goes into remission. So many diseases go into remission. Diabetes can also go into remission. Somebody who's taking treatment, who had high HbA1c, higher than 6.5, now has come down to less than 6.5 for at least three months without any medicines, is in remission phase of diabetes. Is that possible? Of course it's possible. Remember this point, you must remember very clearly, type 1 diabetes, fibrocalcific pancreatic diabetes, post-pancreatic surgery, diabetes, and so on. There is no remission possible. Okay, It will not remit. Temporary remission can occur in type 1 diabetes, honeymoon period, one week, two weeks, one month, two months. It'll come back. It'll come back with a bang. Okay. And in certain conditions, not even that is also not possible. In type 2 diabetes, remission is possible, but in a targeted population, I'll tell you what the target population, not every Tom, Dick and Harry with type 2 diabetes, but in a targeted population. What are those examples? I'm giving you six such examples. After severe weight loss, we'll talk about that for the rest of this talk. Post gestational diabetes. All of you have seen women with gestational diabetes. They have diabetes. They may take insulin. They may take tablets. One day after the delivery, there's no diabetes at all. It's gone. It's remission. But it may come back. Any of these diabetes, it may come back. Bariatric surgery. They say it's a sure cure for diabetes. No, I disagree. Only in the early stages, within the first eight years, only if you operate, you will get remission. Otherwise, weight will come down. So many things will come down. BP may come down. So many things may come down. Sugar also may come down. But remission is not possible. We have just finished uh, one of my students' PhD on that. Only 8.5 years. Below 8.5 years, you get remission. After that, you don't get remission. Stress-induced diabetes. Severe stress. If you are under severe, severe stress, it will produce diabetes. Stress goes away. Diabetes goes away. Will it come again? It can come again. Next stress may bring it on again. Drug-induced diabetes. All of us know during COVID, steroids are used to, to cure uh, people with uh, COVID and to save their lives. But that same steroid produces diabetes. What happens when you stop steroid? Well, it may go away. It may come back again, but it may go away. And the last is something which I've been talking about in earlier meetings. I think in one of the earlier ACPs, I talked only on this. Early and aggressive treatment of type 2 diabetes. Somebody who's diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, give them a short course of insulin, three weeks, four weeks, along with tablets. 
then you can withdraw the tablets you can withdraw the insulin also and they can go into remission i have a large series i published two papers on this okay so here are six examples of remission there could be more but i am going to talk only about the severe weight loss and how to achieve remission remember that to achieve this remission you must be on a diet if you say no no i'll burn all the calories i'll eat whatever i want i'll eat 3000 calories a day but i'll run a marathon you think you will uh, cure your diabetes or produce remission of diabetes think again it's not possible you have to cut the calories okay but of course physical activity is a very good help and you must do that also both together your chances are more weight loss is fundamental without weight loss some things like the stress induced diabetes may go away but invariably weight loss is associated with the calorie restriction stress reduction i already talked about early aggressive treatment i already talked about which diet okay again there's a lot of argument people will say low carbohydrate diet there are people who blame carbohydrate and say it's the main cause of course i agree i've got cross section data i've got prospective data uh, i've even got uh, randomized clinical trials substituting carbohydrate with protein and so on definitely one of the drivers of the epidemic in india is a very high carbohydrate not 45% high carbohydrate is 45% we take 65% 70% If you take so much carbohydrate, you're overloading your pancreas all the time. You withdraw that, you make it 30 percent or 20 percent. Suddenly, the sugars will come down. You'll also lose weight. Of course, maintaining less than 10 percent carbohydrate, which is what people say, is not sustainable in our country. It is simply not sustainable. Very low calorie diets, about which I'm going to talk now, less than 800 calories per day, which you should take on a continuous basis, will induce remission. How does it do that? I'll show you in the next slide. This slide shows you. whenever you have too many calories positive calorie balance that calorie gets converted into fat and that fat will go into the liver in the liver where the insulin is supposed to work it will produce insulin resistance we know that insulin resistance is one of the primary defects in type 2 diabetes okay so you need more insulin more insulin more insulin so the uh, demand on the pancreas to produce more and more insulin will be there but what happens the same fat then goes into the pancreas and settles there also once you have fat in the pancreas beta cells cannot produce insulin so the second defect in type 2 diabetes insulin secretory defect also comes that's why you get type 2 diabetes you have insulin secretory defect you have insulin resistance you have got both now imagine the opposite if you have a negative calorie balance a profound negative calorie balance what will happen slowly the fat will melt not slowly rapidly the fat in the liver will melt and slowly the fat in the pancreas will melt so insulin secretion become better insulin resistance goes down so diabetes goes into remission because these are the two things that produce it it's an abcd any kindergarten uh, diabetology will tell you that these two will happen but for that you have to have a negative calorie balance this is what all these guys are doing in different different ways keto diet this diet that diet some some more they'll tell people to finally they'll have a fancy name they'll charge 1 lakh rupees for it they'll put in different they'll say one program and send you program nothing to do with it you are starving yourself and you're producing that that they won't tell you okay and that is how they all work now within 7 days of instituting a substantial negative calorie balance there is a substantial fall in the liver fat and therefore your liver sensitivity improves but it takes 8 weeks for the pancreatic fat to go and that is shown here if you look at this is in weeks 0 weeks 2 weeks 4 weeks 6 weeks by the first week itself the glucose has fallen the hepatic glucose production has fallen and the hepatic triglyceride has fallen and therefore your insulin sensitivity has improved now this is pre and post bariatric surgery in diabetic patients type 2 and in normal glucose tolerant people using mri and other methods they measured liver fat you can see the liver fat has substantially reduced after bariatric surgery and therefore this will last longer obviously because you are operated but even this can come back later on the liver fat can come back i have seen patients after bariatric surgery who achieved remission come back later on with diabetes and i'm going to talk about that this is in the pancreas you can see after 8 weeks what happens is pancreatic fat comes down insulin secretion is improving and this is all the classical work of roy taylor roy taylor and did you know that diabetes type 2 diabetes is caused by 1 gram of fat in the pancreas what is 1 gram that much that much fat because the pancreas is so small so within that we have 1 gram of fat that 1 gram of fat is enough to cut your insulin secretion and to produce diabetes now if you want to get rid of that 1 gram of fat you have to lose 15 kilos in weight that's a difficult part you can't get rid of 1 kilo and think you'll you'll reverse your diabetes no 15 kilos you have to lose and that's what the direct trial showed 
direct stands for diabetes remission clinical trial the classical trial before that there were trials done on eight people 10 people 12 people not powered at all then came this big trial done by roy taylor and colleagues published in the lancet which is the best study we have the largest study we have and let us see what they achieved this is published in the lancet you can see uh, navid sattar and roy taylor there now they had 300 people so in the direct trial the largest trial done in the world so far the number of people studied was 300 okay 150 in the intervention arm 150 in the control arm why i'm telling you these numbers all these wallas who tell you that they can reverse diabetes you just see their advertisement every fellow has caught on to a number 10000 they'll say i have reversed 10000 people 10000 people 10000 the fellow had started his company only last week he'll also have 10000 patients he was already reversed completely reversed in the thing you know so it just tells you they're just lying you know they're all total liars don't just believe them so this is 300 cases this is the highest best ever done in the world is 300 cases where 150 went into one arm 150 went into the other arm and what did they do they starved people they gave 800 calorie diet so what is that one drink one nestle optifast drink okay it contains 400 calorie that much it has okay less than half a glass drink one for lunch that is your lunch drink one for dinner that's your dinner nothing more water in between nothing for how long three to five months okay every day that same drink same drink same drink same drink morning onion morning night morning night morning night nothing else nothing else is allowed okay uh, for no kind of any food is allowed for five months so that is literally starvation they're making you starve so what did they find they found remission in 46 percent so they didn't get 98 percent they didn't get 100 percent like these guys are saying that they can do there was 4% remission in the control group. Even without doing anything, automatic remission happened in 4%. You have to minus that from this. So you minus that, it's 42%. So 42% of people achieved remission over the control group. Agreed. What does that mean? 58% did not achieve remission. After doing all this, only drinking this 400 calorie thing for five months, after that, 58% could not develop remission at all. And that was driven by weight loss. Now, if you look at weight loss in the direct trial, those who achieved less than 5 kg, after doing all this, some people did not lose weight at all. They did not get remission. Some achieved little more, remission went up. Some achieved little more, remission went up. Those who achieved more than 15 kg, that's why I said 15 kg is needed. 15 kg weight loss. So suppose you're 85 kilos. Now, if you bring it to 70 kilos or below, you can achieve remission. How many achieved? 86%. What does that mean? 14% did not achieve remission even in that group. So where are these fellows coming up with 95%, 98%, 100%? So this is a cl clinical trial where everybody, every day, the dietitian is talking to you, making you do, motivating you, doing all this, giving you this Optifast drink, seeing that you're in a trial, recording you. What they are doing in the real world is simply giving something to some people. Will you get better than this? Better than 86% you'll get if you do that, okay? What happened after one year? After one year, what happened was that from 86%, 16% converted to diabetes, and so there's only 70% left now while on the trial. Okay, only 70% is left. So 30% have already converted to diabetes end of two years. Okay, and we don't have data beyond two years. So direct trial ended at two years time. They may collect it later. As I speak today, there's only two years. So what is the conclusion of the best trial done in the world? That if you take, and whom did they select? They selected the best people, people with short duration of diabetes, only six years. The mean HB1C is eight, 8.4. 8 they didn't take people with 9, 10, 11, 12. They had good beta cell function. They had severe obesity. That means a lot of weight to lose. Highly motivated people with a huge team working on it. Okay. After doing all that, less than half of the people achieved remission. So remission is possible, but it is extremely difficult. It is not easy to achieve. Okay. Now, whom does it work for? So I have put down this A, B, C, D, E mantra for achieving remission. Remember this, it'll be very easy for you to remember. A is A1C. Your A1C should not be very high. In direct trial, it was only 8, 8.4%. If you have 10, 11, 12, 14 HP1C, you achieve remission. It's very difficult. Even after barrier surgery, we could not achieve. B is body weight. If you take thin people, how are you going to achieve remission? You have to achieve weight loss. So weight loss means only big people. That means heavy people. See a very fat man coming with mild diabetes. Think of remission in that person. C peptide should be good. Unless you have very good beta cell function, what are you going to reverse? D is duration of diabetes. Should be short. Already told you, six years is what they used. Barrier surgery, we've seen eight years. Enthusiasm. Unless you have a highly motivated people, 
uh, who are entering into this you think they'll just keep drinking this little fluid for the next five months morning evening morning evening the same fluid you keep drinking how many people will do that will you and i do that it's extremely difficult also remember beyond two years as of now we have no data we don't have data in indians who are much thinner we have to do it so studies need to be done and the most important point is re-reversal of diabetes or relapse of diabetes these are both coins which have words which i have coined occurs in a large percentage of people what is this diabetes re-reversal or relapse of people i'm going to give you a case study and end with that 35 year old man came to me six years duration initially he had uh, diabetes and we had to treat him with tablets, give him a little bit of insulin also because he had some symptoms, some belnite or something he had. So he gave him a little insulin. Then I stopped the insulin. Then slowly the tablets came down. He told me when he came, his weight was 123 kilos. He said, Doc, my, my aim is to bring it below 100. I will do it. Very motivated, highly motivated individual. I put him on low calorie diet, low carbohydrate diet. He began to lose weight. Slowly, steadily, he lost weight. And he kept saying 100, 100, below 100, below 100. So slowly achieved remission of diabetes. One day he stopped all his medicines and he achieved total remission. See what happened to him. His weight came down 123, 118, 116, 102, 99. So finally achieved his 100 mark. He wanted, this is what he was working for. I'll come bring it below 100, below 100, below 100. And he achieved remission. Look at what happened to his HbA1c. 8.4, again see 8.4. So it is only mild diabetic that we have taken. 7.7, 7.7, 5.6, 5.4, 5.4, not even 6.5, what, what ADA said, this is 5.4, true remission, okay, has occurred. What happened to this fasting blood sugar? 132 came down to 89, postprandial 293 came down to 110. Now look at his blood sugar, 89 and 110 without medication, okay? Look at his liver function. He had fat in the liver, when he did ultrasound, he had grade two fatty liver. When he did the SGOT, SGPT, SGOT was, 61 came down to 16, SGPT 94 came down to 20. So both have come to normal now. So his liver fat has disappeared. Exactly what I showed you in my earlier slides. Now what happened to him? He stopped all his medication and he forgot about his diabetes. This is what he wanted to achieve. He has achieved it now. And he told everyone, I'm cured now. Diabetes, I'm cured. So we told him, sir, with all due respect, you're not cured. You're in a remission phase. So diabetes may come back. 